Hi, greetings, it's me, Dr. Paul Gerhardt, and this is the second video in the marketing series of videos that I'm producing here to help you really understanding what great people understand in the world of marketing. In this second section, I wanna talk about developing marketing strategies and a marketing plan. And any type of uh, organization that wants to continue to grow and maintain its relationships with customers really must have a solid marketing plan. Let's face it, we're in a global marketplace now where people are competing with people from and organizations from all across the globe. And so organizations really are having to take a look at who they are and who their clients are and who are their prospective clients and really have a uh, solid strategy uh, and that's connected to a solid marketing plan. So in this video, I want to talk about defining what a marketing strategy is, describing elements that make up a marketing plan, and then we'll analyze a marketing situation using a SWOT analysis. Uh, you should be able to describe how a firm chooses which consumer groups uh, to pursue with its marketing efforts, and then outline the implementation of marketing mix as a means to increase customer value. Uh, Oh, I'll finish up by uh, talking about how firms grow their business. A um, company that most of us are very, very familiar with is probably the biggest retailer in shoes is Nike. And I can remember growing up with Nike, which I thought was kind of an ugly shoe that had a, uh, some stripes on it. And then those shoes turned into having a check mark. And it said that the CEO started his business by selling shoes from the uh, back of his car. And now look at them. They've grown to be one of the biggest, if not the biggest names in shoes. So here's how a company grows from having a business that's run from the back of a, a trunk of a car to becoming a national or an international uh, brand that people re uh, revere and respect. So it's about customer competitive, sustainable uh, competitive advantage. And parts of that are all related to customer perception of value. It's about recognizing who your customer is and giving excellence in the eyes of the, the consumer. It's about uh, operational excellence. It's about product excellence, and it's about locational excellence. And so that's the four main parts for creating a sustainable uh, competitive uh, advantage. So let's talk about customer excellence. It really is about retaining loyal customers. Once you've earned a customer's business, you need to make sure that you maintain it so that you're giving them no other reason to look at the competitors. It's about customer service. Uh, so uh, customers really must be able to perceive that they are truly valued by the organization. Because let's face it, every organization has a competitor which is a viable choice for someone else. So you cannot skimp on customer service. Operational excellence. Uh, it really is about having efficient operations with an excellent supply chain. That means customers always need to make sure that the product is available to them when they need it, want they, when they need it, and at a price that they, they can afford and they expect the quality. Product excellence really is about perceived excellence in quality. Uh, if you've got a uh, competitor who's got a better quality product out there but it's at the same price point, people probably are going to be choosing. Uh, the competitor. So you have to really recognize that uh, your brand must be positioned properly. You can't always be the very best in all categories, but in its pricing category, it must be perceived as being excellent for, for the price and the quality that's expected. Location excellence is very, very important. A competitive advantage means that the product is positioned in a location that is uh, uh, easily assessed uh, accessible by uh, the intended customer. 
And so you've probably heard that the three most important things in retailing are location, location, and location. And it's so true. I've seen so many businesses go out of business because they, they were just too far off the beaten track and it was inconvenient for customers. And I've also seen uh, lots of businesses that were just mediocre thrive just because they had an excellent uh, retail location. So you really need to uh, recognize that where you position yourself is important. So what is competitive advantage is, is really the the question that you need to ask yourself when you're building a marketing plan. How can we make sure that my company or your company that you're working for or developing has a competitive advantage? So developing the marketing plan is really, really important. Uh, in Step one really is about the business mission and objectives. Step two is about the situation analysis, which is related to your SWOT, uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Uh, step three is about identifying opportunities at segment, segmentation, targeting, and positioning. Step four is about uh, implementation of your marketing mix. That's the product, price, place, and promotion. We talked about that in the last video. And step five is about e evaluating performance and using marketing metrics. And that goes right back to does it connect with the mission and objectives? Does the uh, marketing metrics uh, directly uh, address SWOT? It's also related to identifying your, your opportunities. So all of these things all come full circle and they're all interconnected. So uh, mission and objectives, uh, situation analysis, SWOT, identifying opportunities, that's segmentation, targeting, positioning. And then step four is about implementing your marketing mix. It's the, do you have the right product? Do you have the right price? Is it in the right place? And it, does it have the right promotion? So that essentially, in a nutshell, is what the marketing plan is all about. Uh, the phases of a strategic uh, plan include one, planning, then implementing, and then controlling. And you'll hear these in, in almost any management class. I mean, great managers really need to know what they need to know, and people need to be doing the right things at the right time, and the right controls need to be in place so that uh, customers are getting consistency in meeting their expectations with product quality, prices, and, and operation. So let's take a... Uh, a business mission statement, for instance, MAD, Mothers Against Drunk Driving. And their mission is that uh, MAD strives to stop drunk driving, support the victims of this violent crime, and prevent underage drinking. Pretty simple mission statement. And in their operations and in their connections, they make sure that their marketing uh, is in alignment with that mission statement. So uh, let's talk about, uh, let's go back to situational analysis. This is step two we talked about. Uh, say you are Nike and your biggest competitor is Adidas. You have to be able to take a look at your environment internally and externally. Nike's strengths is one, they have a strong brand, they have strong celebrity endorsers, and they have innovative products. Externally, uh, their opportunities are emerging countries. You know, there's a lot of countries with, uh, because of the internet, that they're developing stronger economies, which means that they potentially have uh, more and more people who could be wanting to purchase Nike products. And so, also externally, there are other fashion segments that are, that are uh, available. So if you evaluate this, um, the situation analysis for Nike is they have an over-reliance on footwear. Some of the threats for Nike externally are cheaper imports. Uh, the, the pro some of the products that they have and then retail becoming a uh, price competitive. 
Adidas has, also has a strong brand. They have a whole portfolio of brands and a strong global presence. And externally, their opportunity is other emerging uh, countries. Uh, the weakness for Adidas is that uh, management, uh, managing their, their many brands, that's a challenge. And their threats are cheaper imports, uh, limitation of products, and uh, recessionary forces. So the economy always has a, uh, has a, a, a say in how well companies uh, do. So step three was identifying and evaluating opportunities. And we use the acronym STP, which stands for segmenting, targeting, and positioning. So uh, let's take Hertz. And Hertz is a company um, where we're going to use as an example for market segmentation. So they have five segments. And if you think about uh, the different segments, they kind of make sense as it relates to their product. So segment one, these are customers who are single thrill seekers and uh, gearheads and they're on vacation. These people um, have, um, are more prone to like the adrenaline collection. And for Hertz, they have Corvettes and they have Chevrolet Camaros. Segment two for Hertz is business customers and families who prefer luxurious rides. And that collection is their prestige collection. And so that's the Infinity Q and the Cadillac Escalade. Segment three for Hertz is environmentally conscious cons customers. That's then they have their collection called the Green Collection. And that's the Toyota Prius and the Ford Fusion. Segment four for Hertz are families. These are the SUV drivers and the minivan. Um, people in the Toyota RAV4 and the Ford Explorer uh, meet that segment. Uh, segment five is converted commercial customers. These uh, are the ones that could use uh, vans and trucks and so uh, they Hertz has the Ford cargo van. So hopefully this gives you a better idea of what market segments are as it relates to your product brand. Step four is about implementing the market mix and allocating the right resources. And there are four things that need to be considered. Uh, product value creation, price value capture, place value delivery, and promotion value communication. So product value uh, creation. This is successful products and services are those that customers perceive as value enough to buy. That word value is one of the most important things to consider in business because you may have an expensive product, but if people understand the value behind that price, people will be willing to pay for it. So uh, price must allow for customers to perceive good value with the product they receive. And that's how you capture value as it relates to price. I can remember uh, when I was first studying business consulting. And one of the things that came out uh, in my lessons was the fact that if you price yourself too low in the consulting business, people will think you don't know what you're talking about. And if you perceive yourself really high in an, in an industry, you really need to, to give extraordinary value by going above and beyond what your competitors do. And so really being very, very clear about how you're pricing yourself really matters. So people need to perceive it as value. It may seem like a lot of money, but when people really understand what they're getting for that price, then it becomes a value. And so once uh, you are very, very clear on your pricing strategy, it's time to promote it and promote the value specifically through different types of communication. And organizations do that through television, radio, magazines, and the sales force. And, and very often these days using new social media. And uh, step five of what we've been talking about is about evaluating performance using marketing metrics. And there are uh, four different areas to look at. 
Um, in every organization, if they have multiple products, they'll always have stars. They'll always have question marks, things that they're not quite sure of, whether or not they want to keep. Cash cows, these are the ones that people are, are buying and it, it really adds uh, significant revenues and profits. And then the dogs, the, the products that really aren't working so well and uh, are being uh, thrown out because too many resource, you don't want to allocate too many resources to uh, a product that really isn't worth people's while. In figuring out what those are, I want to use the Apple Corporation. Uh, for example, um, the Apple iMac desktop would be considered a cash cow for Apple. And the iPad Air 2 would be considered a star. These are two products that almost everybody is familiar with. And you can see how they continue to add value. So, yeah, every company in their marketing uh, needs to understand growth strategies. They have to take a look at what's new and what's current. They need to look at market penetration, product development, market development, and then diversification. And uh, so each of these uh, you have to consider uh, the resources that are available. Think about market penetration. You have to look at the existing marketing mix and your existing customers. And in what way is a sale a market penetration strategy? In market development, you'll have to look at existing marketing mix and new customers. Uh, what can a company do to continue to grow in a difficult retail environment? There are always opportunities, but you have to really be smart. Product development is all about developing a new product or service and being aware of who your current target market is. Are they in alignment? Will your current customers uh, continue uh, to do business with you and want more of the products that you have? And then there's diversification. This is about new product or service and about new market segmentation. So recognizing that uh, you, you already may have a, a hold of a certain market, but really taking a look at new segments that may appeal. Maybe it's a younger generation that you didn't currently appeal to. How can you uh, cater to them? So let's talk about some key terms. Customer excellence is achieved when a firm develops value-based strategies for retaining loyal customers and provides outstanding service. A diversification strategy introduces a new product or service to a market segment that currently is not served. Location excellence occurs by having a good physical location and internet presence. A market development strategy employs the existing marketing to reach new market segments, whether they're domestic or international. A marketing penetration strategy employs existing marketing mix and focuses the firm's efforts on existing customers. And finally, a uh, marketing plan is a written document composed of an analysis of current marketing situation, opportunities, and threats for the firm, marketing objectives, st and strategy uh, specified in terms of the four P's, action programs, and projected or performa income and other financial statements. All right, so that in a nutshell is what you need to know about developing marketing strategies and a marketing plan. I encourage you to roll your sleeves up and do more research on marketing strategies and we will talk more about this in video three. Thank you so much for your valuable time. I hope that you have a great day because only you get to choose how you feel about it. I'm Dr.